What's up guys, on today's episode, we're gonna be going over Ammo Frothy, the Ammo Aerator, and two new towels. This is gonna change the way you wash your car wet or dry. That and a lot more coming up on this episode of Drive and Protect. Okay, before we get started with how to use Ammo Frothy, the aerator, and the multiple towels, I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what was going on in my mind. What was the purpose behind creating something like this? Now, you guys have emailed me a thousand times asking you about waterless washes. How come you don't use it in your video? How come you don't use it on this car? How come, why, why, why? That sort of thing, and I'm saying to myself, uh, I've been very hesitant, as you can tell, um, because I just don't think they offer enough lubrication in that worst case scenario. And this worst case scenario is when you don't have water or a hose or lubrication. So. I've been struggling with figuring out, um, it'd been easy just to come out with a waterless wash, but how do you make one that actually does what I want it to do and offer the most lubrication and lift uh, the dirt in a particular way? And again, we're gonna go over that in a second. So the backstory is basically I'm shaving one day and I'm you know, putting a razor against my skin and you know, I get a lot of razor burn and so I'm looking at the, the, uh, the shaving cream and saying, wow, this, this helps minimize it. What's in this? And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, I'm putting cream on my hands because in winter my hands crack with all the detailing. What's in these lotions? And one of the things that we found is a thing called the humectant. Now humectants actually retain the moisture in a particular substance. And I'm thinking to myself, man, that would be pretty cool. If, if we think about it, right, skin or, or paint is just like skin and we treat it like skin, well, what, what, how come? So I tried to figure out a way to cross pollinate these things, if that makes sense. So that's kind of the backstory of why I've been hesitant and waiting and trying to just form the right thing, just like, you know, brute, hydrate, boost, reflex, um, and then of course, frothy. I, I spend a lot of time trying to innovate things that we're gonna actually use as drivers on our car and clean them. And so there's a very specific pur purpose. Um, the same thing with Jalea I'm working on over here. I've gone through 50 different derivations of it because I want it to be very, very specific and I don't come out with it until I'm uh, excited. So that's why I'm you know, really pumped to, uh, to show you this product. Um, and so that's the backstory there. So whew, with all that, let's do the steps. They're super simple and I'm gonna do it on multiple cars as well. We're gonna do it on the nice clean, you know, semi-clean silver car, a dirty uh, you know, black car, a dirty car in the parking lot. So I'm gonna show you different things so that you can say like, oh, there's multiple ways of using this. And at the end, I'll show you the tips and tricks because you can actually use it with water. You can use it wet or dry. You can use it in all these different techniques and we're gonna have a thousand videos in the future. But I kinda wanted to get your mind thinking about hey, how can I use this uh, in my particular situation? Am I an apartment dweller? Is it cold outside and I wanna work in the garage? I don't wanna get my floor wet. I live in the desert. Now, I'm in a drought situation. So there's a lot going on in here and I just wanted to kind of blah, that on camera, so to speak, and get your mind thinking before we get into uh, the how-to steps. First, frothy is a one to 20 concentrated formula. Do not use this straight, it must be diluted. So for every one ounce of frothy, it must be mixed with 20 ounces of water from your faucet, which is roughly here on the aerator, but the measurements are on the clear window. Then add your one ounce of frothy to the aerator. To make life easier, one ounce is roughly three small capfuls. Once unscrewed from the top of your frothy bottle, use it as a measuring device and pour it into your aerator. For practical reasons, I typically add two ounces of frothy or another three capfuls and 40 ounces of water in total, simply doubling the original amount to take advantage of the larger size reservoir and to not have to refill again until after I've done a couple of cars. For your reference, 20 ounces on the aerator is here, while 40 ounces is here or at the shoulder of the aerator. Notice how much headspace or extra room there is above the 1.5 liter mark in the reservoir. It's a very important characteristic of this particular aerator and we will dissect the pump at the end of the video and explain why it's the best on the market. If used properly, one ounce of frothy cleans approximately two to three cars based on the size and level of dirt. So that's roughly 25 to 30 cars per bottle or about $1 per wash. And that's without using water, hoses, buckets, mitts, soap, and so on. Once your ratio is correct, screw the top on, gently mix the frothy and water, and pump up the aerator several times until the compressor is hard to push down, indicating it's fully pressurized. The pump stroke displacement is the highest PSI on the market as well, creating the driest foam possible. More on this later in the video. Okay, now that the ammo aerator is loaded with the correct dilution of frothy, work the vehicle in sections. For this demo, I'm gonna focus on the back one third of the R8. With the pump compressor hard to push down or at full pressure, release the blue frothy trigger in quick back and forth motions about one to two feet away from the paint. 
Keep in mind, this is not traditional high sudsing soap, where the car is dripping in water and soap, and you need to plow through lots of product that require a hose rinse afterwards. These types of crazy washes can be really helpful too, but frothy is for those times when this is not needed or even a feasible option. The mission here is to create just enough lift between the towel and the paint to avoid scratching. When this lift happens, you actually feel the towel start to glide really easily across the paint and the contaminants will become engulfed in the frothy and stick to the towel and not your paint. It's a completely different feeling that you'll notice and feel once you start using it. With that said, you can add additional layers of frothy in areas that may have heavier dirt, such as the lower rockers, behind the wheels, and the wheels themselves. So regulate the quantity of frothy as you see fit, but in most cases, less is more. Let the humectant do the work for you. Next, flip the towels as they become soiled, and when in doubt, just use new, clean towels. At the same time, turning or rotating the towel as you wipe will keep fresh or unfilled fibers in direct contact with the frothy and avoid potentially scratching your paint. Much the same as we do when drying with hydrate after a wash. Once the frothy and dirt has been scooped off the paint, quickly go back over the section with a clean, dry microfiber towel to touch up any missed spots. Afterwards, add amyl hydrate to the dry, clean paint. Now, hydrate was originally designed to only be used in the wet, but we've since reformulated it so that it can now be used in the wet and the dry as a lubricant and a spray sealant. The new formula is thicker and more concentrated, as you can see, from old to new. This increases your paint shine, overall lubrication, and value to the detailer. With a separate towel, massage in the hydrate, flip, and buff clean. Pretty simple, but the shine and protection speaks for itself. Most importantly, with this new reformulation, we've also tightened up our chemistry to be even more environmentally safe and easy to use. Okay, now that you get the idea of how to use it and it's really not that complicated, I wanna show frothy in various situations, colors, and level of dirt to avoid any YouTube comments of, yeah, Larry, it looks pretty good, but you only washed a kinda dirty car in silver. So with that in mind, let's start off slow with wheels. As you know, they tend to be gross quicker than say your paint. So usually these areas need a thicker layer of frothy and a different, or in this case, a blue towel designated for wheels only and not to be confused with red or orange paint towels. Obviously with any product, avoid warm or hot rims, but otherwise it's safe on all wheels and will not remove gelée, reflex, or skin protection. In fact, it actually leaves a light layer of shine behind. As always, be sure to rotate and switch blue towels as they become soiled. Frothy is also safe on clear bras as well. The black 964 has a light layer of dust all over it, but heavy dirt on the bra behind the wheels. Spray frothy and wipe in scooping motions. Touch up with a clean, dry microfiber towel, then add your hydrate and you're done. Same thing goes for the rear, but notice the rubber marks from the last track event after the dirt is removed. Because I have skin on the bra, I can simply apply skin again to a microfiber towel, gently wipe, and the rubber rolls off. Check out the link above for a full video of rubber and tar removal on a BMW M3. Frothy can also be used on engines for quick cleanups as well. This is exactly when you want to use the least amount of water from a hose, so it's a perfect solution for light touch-ups. Obviously, it's not going to degrease an old engine, but it will safely remove the driving dust and leave a like new glow to plastic, metal, and carbon fiber. The front of the car is also dirty, but I've shown this clip a few times already. Now take notice of the evaporation in Fast Forward. I'll play it a few times backwards and forwards. That's the key to this working as well as it does. It's the humectant qualities at play. This is what gives you the lubrication and protection, but the evaporation is what gives you the hoseless capabilities. Okay, what about matte paint on the old Impala? Works great here too. This beast is really dirty from sitting out in what seems like our 100th nor'easter of this year. Afterwards, it's clean, but it's obviously not shiny because it's matte paint. Now onto my daily driver. It's pretty salty and could use a bath, but it's 26 degrees here, so not really conducive to a pleasant wash experience. With frothy on the door, followed up by hydrate, the paint looks significantly shinier, but it's hard to see a massive pop on silver. So I asked if I could clean my father-in-law's car, who stands in as my double when I'm trying to focus the camera. Anyways, his car is filthy, dark blue, and covered in lots of bird poo. Perfect. First, I focused on one side of the car. Same steps as before. Frothy, wipe, 
rotate, then touch up with a clean orange towel, then add hydrate, and move on. Then I worked on the wheels, which were in desperate need of some love. Next was the trunk with the same steps, then it was time to froth the well-fed bird poo on the driver's side door, then the rocker, and more bird poo on the hood. Once again, watch the lubrication evaporate, and for whatever reason, this makes me happy. Likewise, I always finish up with a specific window cleaner for glass. Clearly, using glass cleaner on paint is a huge no-no because there's zero, or what I would consider negative lubrication, but that's what makes it so great for glass and seeing through it with no smudges. Finally, I added ammo mud to the tires and the black trim for some extra pop. Plus, my father-in-law was standing five feet from me, carefully watching his baby, so I added a little extra bling just for him. Keep in mind, the leftover frothy will evaporate in just a few minutes, so don't panic. That's your active lubrication, and it will evaporate if left alone. On the way home, I couldn't resist stopping by every car and cleaning their door to see a before and after. The difference in shine is intense without removing any waxes or sealants. After the Outback, I remembered a friend had an old rusted out truck in the back of his shop that was disgusting, and I wanted to see how frothy could hold up to its years of dirt. So I frothed it in one spot and let it sit for a second or two, then wiped it with the orange and red towel. It lifted the dirt and left a decent shine to an otherwise trashed paint job. On the way out of the parking lot, and just as our next nor'easter started to roll in, I quickly cleaned my friend's car. Look at the depth and shine created in the two-step hoseless humectant technique on just one door alone. When I got home, I actually noticed my driver's side door beating up after the earlier cleaning and the driving home and through all the storm, etc. Notice the front versus the back door. Clearly, a layer of protection is active on the freshly cleaned door in front and not on the back. Okay, as promised, let's dissect the ammo aerator. Now, I've looked at a lot of units on the market, and I've chosen this one in particular because it is absolutely fantastic, the best by far. Here are the top 10 reasons why it is the best foamer on the market. But before we dissect the aerator, let's remember that pump sprayers come in two major categories. The most common sprayer is the one that spreads water and soap easily without having to pump a traditional trigger many times. This is what's used for applying clear bras, for example. The other type of pump stroke displacement sprayers are what's called foamers. There's a wide variety of choices based on the dryness of the foam desired, quality of the mold and material, seals and gaskets, as well as other important attributes. Here are my top 10 reasons for choosing this professional grade foamer over anything else. Number one is the pump stroke displacement of this aerator is 3.4 cubic inches, which is incredibly high. Meaning, with each stroke you're adding more air to your reservoir with fewer pumps and less work. The more air you have in your tank, the more consistent and clingier or stickier the foam is that you create. To create a higher quality of foam, known as dry foam, the ammo aerator has four waddings instead of two, known as pucks. These pucks combine to agitate frothy with a consistent blend, releasing the exact level of humectant and lift to dry or unlubricated paint. Number three, the blue trigger is extremely precise, meaning no false or accidental release of product when holding the handle or carrying the unit, which can be extremely frustrating if unintentionally triggered. Number four is all the seals are made of Viton synthetic rubber and are distinguished by its signature green color and its density, which is significantly higher than most types of common rubber seals. Number five is its oversized reservoir. Although this is a common 1.5 liter size, this unit allows for headroom or space above and beyond the 1.5 liters to allow the oversized stroke displacement to fill the top of the reservoir with higher PSI and quantity of that compressed air. Remember, the amount of compressed air is key to the quality of your foam output. Number six is having a stable base. Putting this down quickly to wipe the paint is very important. Having it fall over and break the nozzle while working is a huge waste of time and product. Next, the unit itself is made from a unique blown mold that is strong and incredibly durable. Retaining nuts, handle, and nozzle construction was the thickest material in my testing, leading to less leaks and nozzle breakage, and the fill marking window is much easier to read since it's contrasting colors. Number eight is that it's easy to open when you have wet gloves on. The neck of the reservoir, grip lines, and the top of the nozzle are easy to hold and twist with wet hands, making life easier at the end of the job. Number nine, the pump handle is simple and ergonomic. 
the user can pump the compressor from any hand position and use all five fingers for easier pushing. Last but not least, number 10 is my favorite, and that is the air release valve. By far the quickest, most conveniently placed, and the least hassle I've found, especially with wet and slippery hands. This valve must be used every time before putting any compressed tool away, so it better be comfortable. So here's the bottom line. This is the highest quality, longest lasting foamer that creates the driest and thickest foam on the market. And remember, to keep any foamer running smoothly, don't cross contaminate products within the aerator to avoid premature degradation, much the same practice as wash mitts, towels, and so on. However, you can leave the remaining or unused frothy mixture in the aerator for your next usage as long as the pressure is released. And when it arrives, don't forget to put your favorite sticker on the reservoir to make it your own and to avoid cross-contamination or confusion if you happen to have multiple aerators. Finally, the frothy technique also works on coated cars, dirt bike plastic and seats, Harley and cruisers with lots of chrome, sport bike fairings and bug or windscreens, but it must be applied with the aerator. A normal bottle and spray trigger will not create the foam you need. Also remember that frothy will remain in the creases and crevices for a few minutes because you're not rinsing them with water. This is 100% normal. It's your active lubricant, but it will evaporate in about three minutes if left alone, or you can simply use compressed air or just blow it out in two seconds. Likewise, remember this is a two-step process. Basic wipe and go type products do not offer the lubrication needed to remove dirt. So follow the simple steps and minimize scratching when water is not available. Okay, using frothy in the two-step method is clearly pretty simple, but as I mentioned earlier, you can actually use frothy as a lubricant with other wash methods or techniques. If you do happen to have access to a hose, great, use it. The more lubrication, the better. Simply rinse the car down, knock as much dirt off as possible, apply frothy and wipe as before. Then simply follow up with hydrate and you're done. Now you've found another way to increase lubrication on your paint, but at the same time, avoid bringing out tons of tools, buckets, products, and so on. What if you have a local self-serve car wash near you? That's cool too. Instead of lugging a bunch of buckets and soap and a brush in your trunk, all you need is the aerator, some towels, and hydrate. Just heavily rinse the car with the wand to knock off the heavy dirt, then follow the same two-step process of frothy, rotate the towels, and a final wipe with hydrate, and you're good to go. No sense in using a brush to scratch your paint. Microfiber towels are literally designed to pick up or lift and hold. Brushes are designed to push. Not a good idea for paint. And if you have a hose and are performing a proper full wash with soap, buckets, and mitts, that's great too. You can froth the paint or your wash mitt before you get into the areas of high concentrated dirt or areas that require a bit more lubrication than others like the lower rocker or the rear bumper during a normal wash with a soapy mitt. Let me be crystal clear. Ammo Frothy is a lubricant that helps lift dirt in the worst case scenario, or in our detailing language, that means dry or non-lubricated paint. In other words, without the assistance of a hose or water, hence the name hoseless lift. But I'll always encourage you to do the best and most lubricated wash your circumstances will allow. And unfortunately, sometimes those circumstances are without water. But now you have a solution for a safe and lubricated cleaning without a hose. All right, guys, well, that's it. We went over Ammo Frothy, the aerator, and the new hydrate. Uh, this has been an amazing experience, and you guys have been super, super cool. You sent me a zillion emails asking about waterless washes, and I've been working on this for a long time and came up with this kind of, you know, this hoseless thought. And, um, you know, it, my inspiration is really you guys. So thank you again for that. I do believe this is going to be a game changer at the size or the magnitude of, uh, of Ammo Hydrate. Uh, in that it brings a lot of lubrication. I think it's gonna solve a lot of problems for you guys out there in terms of scratching the car in that situation where you don't have any water. So uh, really cool um, chemistry behind this and the humectants and things like that. Big thank you to you guys for doing all that stuff and kind of motivating me to think that way. Anyways, if you have any questions, shoot me an email, larry at ammonyc.com. Thanks for watching.